Hi guys, it's Loretta with Sparrowhawker Designs. Uh, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I am going to attempt to do another circle and stitches video. Um, I did it last night and um, it didn't work out. <laughs> the video didn't work. I had to redo it. So I've been having a lot of issues lately with my camera. So this is the first block that um, I did the first week. Um, I had done a uh, blanket stitch in the Sue Spargo thread around the outside and then I did um, another blanket stitch on the inside and these French knots with a, uh, let's see, with the Bella Lusa 100% um, wool thread and then after I turned off the camera I added this round of size 11 seed beads. So what this is, I'm going. I'm making a wall hanging for my living room. My living room is done in like teal, blue, yellow, not bright yellow, kind of like mustard yellow, um, and uh, creams and that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm making this for that. Uh, if you're joining me for the first time, um, you might want to go back and watch the video on here because I tell you like how to get your circle on your square correctly and that kind of thing. Um, this is a linen back here, and this is a wool, and then the center circle here is a homespun, so it's a homespun cotton. Uh, I think what I'm going to do, um, well I know what I'm going to do <laughs> today, is uh, we're going to do a V-stitch or a um, uh, fly stitch on the outside. I'm using just regular DMC thread uh, uh, floss and I'm using two strands of it and then on the inside I'm going to use the size 8 pearl cotton and I think I'm going to do a pistol stitch on the inside and then I think I'm going to put one of these uh, sequins right smack dab in the middle I think that's what I'm going to do uh, so um, I used a glue stick, a fabric glue stick to kind of get these down so that I wouldn't keep catching my thread on the lip of the circle and um, you can, if you if you're going to use glue, please use a fabric glue, um, you know, a fabric glue stick. You don't want to use like a glue glue because it's going to dry too thick, and it's going to dry, uh, and so your needle will have trouble going through it, and it might pick up residue and stuff like that. But with the glue stick, it, it doesn't seem to do that. You can also baste your fabrics down. I use this Coats and Clark. Uh, what is the color of this? I don't know what the color of this is, but it's cotton, all-purpose, let's see, the number on it is, I don't know, nine S970? I don't know. You would think they would have the color on here. Anyway, it's kind of this weird mousy brown looking thing, but it kind of, um, it's hard to explain, but when you whip stitch Using this, it, this kind of blends into almost everything. I mean, it probably would stand out on white, but yeah. And if you whip stitch it down, just, you know, um, believe it or not, you can then go over with your embroidery stitches and you will never see this and it doesn't interfere. It's really weird. Also, if you are using something that's not wool, like this is a homespun, or if you're using a regular cotton, you might want to use a stabilizer on the back of it if you're worried about it fraying. Um, I'm not really worried about mine fraying because it's just going to hang on the wall. It's never going to be washed or anything like that. So, okay, without further ado. <laughs> so for the V-stitch, and I know you guys are watching this upside down. <laughs> yeah, I never thought about that. Um, you come up with your thread and then you go down a little ways, however big you want your stitches. And you can do these however big you want. And then you come up somewhere in your circle. And then you catch your thread, and there you go. And then you put that back down in like that. So I will try to do it this way so you can see it. So you come up. Try not to get your thread hooked on other things that you have laying around. <laughs> and then come over here. And, yeah. 
part of the reason the video that I did last night, I literally came in here and just tore all these stitches out um, from the first video that I did. Um, part of the issue with that was uh, I'm having eye issues because I had a, a weird... <laughs> I want, they tell me it's a squishy vitreous, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So I had been out getting groceries with my husband, and all of a sudden I started seeing... Um, this weird kind of black inky swirly thing in my vision and I mean I did my husband's like what exactly are you seeing and I said well it kind of looks like a dementor <laughs> so I've been describing it like that um, but uh, anyway I whipped my phone out and googled it and I also was starting to see like lots like thousands of little black specks and uh, whipped my phone out and googled my symptoms and it said it was caused from a hemorrhage uh, in your eye which you know I mean that you know when you talk about hemorrhage in your eye that that kind of freaked me out just a little bit so I went to my eye doctor and um, because apparently you, you need to go get seen to make sure that your retina hasn't torn away and so I went to my eye doctor and she's like no your retina is not torn um, but if you start seeing like flashes of light, etc., you need to be seen right away. Well, literally an hour after I left their office, I started seeing flashes of light. So I made an appointment like with a retina specialist the next day, and um, and they said uh, he looked at my eye and he said, "No, you have you don't have a torn retina, but you do have a hemorrhage, which I think is what the little black." swirly things are and so anyway so I have like this giant black floater that keeps going in front of my eye and uh, so I have trouble seeing right now <laughs> so of course you know my first question was okay is this gonna stay like this and uh, he said no it should get better on its own but it could take up to a month and I'm just like <laughs> you know just a little freaked out so then I asked him, I'm like, well, what causes that? And he said, getting old. <laughs> Apparently, it's pretty common in people over 50, which um, I had never heard of this before, except literally one of my best friends had the exact same thing happen to her like the week before it happened to me. And um, I had she had told me what had happened, but she didn't tell me like what the diagnosis was. And so, yeah, and she's... I think she just turned 63 or something, so apparently, yeah. And the, and the really encouraging news is that it, it'll probably happen to the other eye, too. So, and uh, apparently he says it's kind of like, um, your eyeball is kind of like, it starts out like jello, like when you make a bowl of jello, how it's all nice and firm and everything. And then after a couple days of sitting, it gets kind of squishy. And that's apparently what happens to the eyeball as well. And so these tears can happen, which I, like I said, completely, completely news to me. I'm sure you all wanted this ophthalmologist um, lecture today, didn't you? But I thought I should explain why, <laughs> why some of my videos are not, you know, working out the greatest. Because I can't really, I'm not really seeing very well. I mean, if I close my one eye, I can see fine. <laughs> I just go around with one eye closed all the time. So anyway, you guys get the idea. This is this is just a V stitch, and you could do a variation on this stitch, which we might do, I might do at another time, which is um, so when you pull this up. Let's see. So when you do this here, instead of going right back down in, you could take it all the way to here. And then you'd have like this long tail on it. And you could just do a whole row of those with the long tail. And there's also the Italian knotted stitch, which is basically the same thing that I'm doing, except for um, instead when you go back down in, you actually wrap your needle and create a knot at the end of it. So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, this stitch, it's kind of like a V stitch with a French knot on the end of it. That's what the Italian knotted stitch is. 
So, and I have the window open. I know this is so bizarre. I had, we had, um, I actually woke up to ice. I think it was on New Year's Day. We had ice, not on the road, but it was covering like all the leaves and the trees and everything. And then yesterday was just this slush. Like it wasn't like rain, but it wasn't really snow and it wasn't really sleet. It was just like, I don't know. It was really cold and gray and I mean, it looked like the end of the world. <laughs> and, um, and now today, the sun is shining, and it's almost 50 degrees. So I have my office window open because um, I really like to get fresh air. So, okay, I'm going to stop here so that I can, so in case my camera decides to just quit on me like it did. I filmed a video on a Crazy Quilt Block that I finished, and... And before I could finish the video, it, it just completely quit on me. So, anyway, so I'm going to do, I'm going to stop here so that y'all can see me do the other stitch. So, the pistol stitch is basically a French knot, a long French knot, basically. Um, and I think I'm going to do it. So, it, th this is the other thing I was going to tell you. Uh, you, you don't have to use the stuff I'm using, you know, like I'm using size eight, 9 embroidery needles. You don't have to. You use whatever is comfortable for you. Um, uh, but if, and like I said, I'm not about perfection, so I, you know, my stuff is a little off-center. I try to make sure this is center within the square, but otherwise this is a little, you know, my stitches aren't perfect. Um, but if you're a little more concerned about perfection, you can get a, um, a chalk pencil and um, measure, you know, kind of like put dots. And then in the middle, if you're concerned about, um, you can do like grids, you know, depending on what the stitches that you're going to do. I mean, obviously I kind of have a grid here already with the fabric, but you know what I'm saying? Like if you, are, if you wanted to do, um, yeah, if you wanted to do like something that comes out, you know, stitches that come out like that. You might want to separate your circle into quadrants with like a, a a chalk pencil. And a chalk pencil, usually once you put your stitches down, you don't even see it. Um, and if you do see it, it can usually just be rubbed away or, you know, maybe, maybe take a damp cloth to it. But most of the time it's pretty, it goes away pretty easily. So you could do this where you come up here on the edge and um, put your French knot in the middle. But I think I'm gonna do it the other way. I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna come up this way and put my French knot at the end. And th this is where my eyesight fails me because I can't see where I'm putting it. <laughs> I think it goes there, okay. Onto that, and so there you go. That's a pistol stitch right there. So I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody has a, a really good 2021. <laughs> we kind of need that after the last year we've had. So I have. A, so if there's anything that you want me to, uh, if there's anything you want to see from me, um, you know, leave a comment below and let me know if there's like a video that you want me to do or something that you just want to see me do. Um, uh, I never know, I know that I have viewers that are with me just for the stitching and then I have some viewers that are with me, um, because of the paper crafts, because of the junk journals and the, um, altered books and that kind of stuff. So I, I'm always worried about, like, if I show too much stitching, then I'm going to, you know, lose the the people who are here for the other crafts and vice versa. If I do too much of the altered books or whatever, that I'm going to lose my stitching people. <laughs> so, um, so I hope that's not the case. But you definitely, I have more stitching watchers than I do paper craft watchers. You can tell by how many times a specific video gets watched, you know, and the journals and stuff don't get watched nearly as much as my stitching videos do.
but I want to make all of my viewers happy, not just a few. <laughs> uh, and so I have a, uh, I'm going to show you guys something in the next video. I want to know your opinions on what I should do with it. I have these embroidered panels from my grandmother. Shh, there's three, I have three of them. I know she made more than that because the other cousins in the family have some. Um, but anyway, I have these, they're uh, deer and fawn, you know, uh, and they're embroidered. And one of them's huge. One of them's like, I don't know, like 11 by 14 or 12 by 16. It used to hang right above my grandpa's um, chair. And because of it being in a frame, there were like staples and stuff in the frame. And so um, the edges of the embroidered piece is kind of... Uh, kind of stained, but it's, I mean, it, it, the embroidery part's fine, you know. The others are a little bit smaller. They're like maybe the size of this mat, you know, I don't know, maybe 12 by 12 or 12 by 14, something like that. And, I mean, as of right now, they're just kind of sitting in the drawer, <laughs> you know. Um, and I would kind of like to do something with them. I had first thought about making like a medallion quilt, you know, where I would put the embroidered piece in the middle and then build a quilt around it. But the more I think about that, the more I'm like, no, because a quilt, I actually use my quilts. I, I don't have, I don't usually own things that I don't, that I don't use, you know, I, I use my quilts. And so I thought, I don't want to do that because then when it comes time to have to wash the quilt, that's going to have to, th those are going to have to get washed. And these were made in the 50s, you know, I mean, um, so fabric's getting kind of old and I just, I, I thought, no, nah, I don't want to do that. But I could do a wall hanging, um, just, um, I can't judge where I'm going here. I could do a wall hanging, just, you know, make like double the size of it, like, if it's a 12 by 16, I could make it like, I don't know, a 24 by 36 or something. Uh, I probably shouldn't have let go of that. Um, but I'm not really, not really sure, because... Hmm, probably should redo that stitch. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, so yeah, so I also thought about using it in part of a slow stitch piece, but the thoughts of me kind of like cutting up and sewing on something my grandmother already made, um, kind of terrifies me, but at the same time it'd be kind of cool because then her embroidery would be next to my embroidery, which I think is kind of neat. Anyway, so guys, this is, I'm gonna let, I don't want the videos to be too long for you. I know some people, they just, they really just want to see how to do it and that's it. They're not interested in what I have to say. <laughs> so I don't want them to be too long. But yeah, I think I'm just going to put, I think I'm just going to put a little sequence right there in the middle of that. So of course I will finish the stitching on this when off camera. Um, and that's, that's all for now. I don't know what stitch I'm going to do next week. Uh, I'm, I'm, and you know, you can find lots of places online, to, uh, on YouTube especially, to learn these stitches. Um, who are actually probably better instructors than I am. <laughs> but, I appreciate you being with me, and I appreciate you stopping in and spending time with me. This will be next week's, um, and these might come out a little bit, I might not wait an entire week to put one of these out. They might just be like every four days or so. So we'll see. Anyway, okay guys, that is all for now. Bye, have a great day.